Good morning, St. John's. What a, what a beautiful sunshine Sunday morning, right? Uh, much warmer than yesterday, right? Yeah. Uh, welcome, and it is the first Sunday of February. I uh, hope that we uh, fully enjoy and glorify the God, our Father, uh, throughout this service. I am very happy to begin this service with uh, a really exciting and great news. Um, Thursday, this past Thursday, February 2nd evening, uh, Brenda and Bill Romanius uh, welcomed and got their newest uh, grandchild, Talia and Noel Anderson, 8 pounds, 15 ounce, and 21.5 inches, right? Yeah. Congratulations. And then many congratulations. Uh, to Katia and Brian and Brock uh, on the birth of uh, your uh, daughter and sister. And we sincerely pray that you have a good night's sleep. <laughs> and the flowers on the altar, uh, the organ side in honor of Robin Strong's birthday this coming to Friday, right? And happy birthday to from family, right? And also the Susan, Susan Novak's birthday on the same day, right? Yeah, happy birthday. <laughs> and also Bill Stern's birthday is coming soon, the, uh, February 8th, right? Yeah, happy birthday, Bill. Uh, please join us uh, at the after service today uh, in Donald's Hall. We're going to have a fellowship time, so please chat and chew and uh, share the fellowship and talking. Uh, the everything, right? Yeah. And the Super Bowl, the chili uh, Sunday, and baked potato, potato sale. Uh, today is the last chance uh, you can sign up uh, this wonderful opportunity. Don't miss it. And uh, our D day is next Sunday, a uh, Super Bowl Sunday, February 12th. And in the narthex, uh, your uh, contribution statement is waiting for you. Please, if you did not pick it up, uh, this is a really good time. And the men's group, the February breakfast, uh, we are back. The old men of St. John's come join us for breakfast on Sunday, February 19th in Dallas Hall. And the church calendar just to fly just so fast. Uh, this year, Ash Wednesday will be on February 22nd. Uh, there will be a service in the sanctuary at 7.30 p.m. Uh, stay tuned, uh, more information to come. Anything I did miss it th this morning? I don't think so. Uh, welcome again, let's worship.
for the call to worship to put it in the bulletin. We are called to bring a new understanding of God that God so loves the world. We are the salt of the earth. We are called to bring a new hope in God that God gives us a new life. We are the light of the world. We are called to follow the commandments and the law. The law of God is to love God and to love one another. Come, let us be the salt of the earth, the light of the world. Let us join together in our love of God to worship and follow Jesus. For you join me for the affirmation of faith, you can be page 881, the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From death he shall come to church, the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of the sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
which we suited. I would like to invite your children to come forward. Things 
need uh, the God's power, the God's energy, the God's spirit. So, to become the good light, the good salt in the world, please pray for uh, the Lord. Give us your power, your spirit, your energy. That is a secret of your prayer. All right? Okay. Let's pray together. A loving God, that you taught us we are the light and salt in the world. They help us to be the light and salt in the world. Uh, thereby, we want to brighten the world and uh, encourage our people uh, to live uh, their freshness and the cleanness in the world. Uh, we always ask for uh, you give us your power, your spirit, your energy. Amen. Enjoy your class. Go back to your feet.
understand. We do not understand the emptiness of accumulation, nor our desire to acquire more. Our desire to live this year more fully and faithfully is even a mystery, but it is real. Our gift today are symbols of our hope and in the inner. Receive them and transport them by your mystical powers for the love of God. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Have you joined me for the hearing of the illumination at the faith we say the black covered one? Page number 2235A. Now we are marching in the light of God. Typo. A. Right? Yeah. Yes. So for this song, this is a, a South African song from the Zulu tribe. Uh, the Zulu people are known to sing and dance, and also they are known for their harmonies. So we are going to sing the Zulu uh, for the second verse, but you may, some of you are staring how the, you know, you're wondering how those words are. I'm going to help you out. So the words are, Siahamba, everybody's going to repeat, Siahamba, Siahamba, Kukanyeni, Kwekos, Siahamba, Kukanyeni, Quinkos. That's all you need for the second verse. Keeps on repeating. Siahamba. Kukanyeni. Quinkos. Everybody gets an A. So let's get started, Dr. Yang. And the scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, from verse 13 and through 20, and printed in the bulletin. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but it is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world, a city built on a hill that cannot be hid. People do not light a lamp and put it under the bushel basket. 
Rather, they put it on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophet. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. And therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called the great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. A God of a mystery and of judgment, who has made us to be salt and light in a tasteless, shadowed world, may guide us in this time of worship, to grant us understanding and spiritual discernment, so that others may see your good works through us, give you the glory, and be moved to serve you, and be with us this moment. Amen. It was one beautiful spring day before the pandemic. I recall that it was a, a Friday. I had to stop that my work in the parsonage as I heard the doorbell ringing several times. Was it from UPS or lawn care guys? No, they do not ring the bell several times consecutively. Just only one time. Ding dong, that's it. <laughs> Presumably it is from the someone who intends to see me strongly. So I opened the door and checked out who they were. A group of Korean people was at the door. Although the St. John's is located near the Korean communities in Annandale, it is very rare to see the Korean visitors unexpectedly. That most of my visitors are a Virginia Conference a clergy and their family, usually visiting D.C. At this time, a group of Korean people were just looking at me with a beautiful smile. By a sense of a clutch, I immediately knew that uh, they were Jehovah's Witnesses. Wow. Uh, their black covered Bible, usually big size, and the watchtower and awake, uh, their flagship, the magazine. Uh, were good enough to address, we are Jehovah's Witnesses. I asked them, that from my, out of my curiosity, how they could know uh, the address or where the Korean American family lives. They answered that they checked out all Korean last names in a community directory or a yellow book and found that 7013 Woodland Drive shows the Park family. Speechless. Why? They did a hard job of reaching out to people in the neighborhood. Indeed, in my home country, Jehovah's Witnesses are considered as heresy. I'm not sure whether the churches in the U.S. have the same viewpoint. I think a less serious. But it is true that seeing or welcoming people from Jehovah's Witnesses is not fun. The mostly their persistent outreach is unbearable. The ones trapped in their fishing net 
it takes a lot of time、uh, to be out of it. So my hunch、uh, was whispering this: "Come on, JW, reveal your identity. Tell them you are the pastor of St. John's. They will go away." So I kindly and humbly、uh, told them, "I am a pastor of St. John's UMC." As you are looking at the beautiful church building over there, what else should I do? However, it appears that they didn't care <laughs> who I was. Instead of looking for another fish, they tried to discuss the Bible and their theology with me. Oh boy, who do you think I am? I'm a clergy pastor of the United Methodist Church. But I was impressed that they were very kind, polite, serious, and friendly. So I felt that I needed to show、uh, my opinion clearly and firmly. Well, you can discuss the Bible with me, but you'd better find out others for your mission. If I were you. I would not spend the time at doing this. With that, they agreed with me and left the cell. I believe that that you have the same experience as me. Do you? Neglecting at your doorbell ringing, pretending you have urgent appointments. <laughs> And keeping your door closed, locked, regardless of their knocking, maybe their magazine they might find a new home, which means your blue-colored trash can immediately. Yeah, we know it. Also, they know this clearly, but they do not stop their outreach. Presumably, their outreach. Has been affected by the pandemic, but they show their identity as Jehovah's Witnesses and share their magazine with the people on and on. As a Methodist pastor, I usually am impressed and challenged by their outreach effort. What are we Methodists doing? Now,、uh, to reach out, don't you think that our passion should exceed、uh, their passion? Unfortunately, most of the mainline denominations they just keep calm. Although they know that they are not welcomed by people, including Christians, they reveal themselves. As Jehovah's Witnesses, with gladness, with pride. The personally, I believe that this is what we Christians need to learn from them. Let's go back to the text today. A story of light and salt in Matthew chapter five is in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. And also, this story directly deals with the Christian identity in the world. That we are the light and salt in the world. But in the story, the Jesus points out a couple of things. The one is how to keep this identity, and second is this identity requires a serious and strong effort. Although we are the light and salt in the world. What if we do nothing to use this identity in our daily life? And if we do not reveal who we are in faith life, how could we transform our lives as well as the world? So here is a simple rule from Jesus: use it or lose it. The please look at the verses thirteen and sixteen. Uh, to undergird、uh, this point, the verse thirteen says, "You are the salt of the earth, 
But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but it is thrown out and trampled on the foot. Verse 16 says, In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. As we are going through uh, this pandemic, living one's life without revealing Christian identity has been a big temptation. The pandemic has changed uh, the Christian life, Christian faith from a public function uh, to a private function. Very, very private. So like, for example, you don't have to reveal uh, you, are, you are a member of St. John's. When you click a uh, one church website at uh, the worship, live worship, you don't have to tell them uh, who you are. Just privately click. That's it. It was a very strange experience. But surprisingly, they all have adjusted themselves uh, to this new area without trouble. And knowing that uh, they are salt and light, uh, they just wanted to keep their identity for their own, not reveal it in the world. The sometimes saying, I am a Christian, requires a more moral and ethical standards and asks people uh, to yield or sacrifice in many ways. So hiding this identity might to make people feel easy going, more comfortable. However, in the story today, the Jesus strongly asks us to reveal our holy identity, light and salt. Revealing turns out responsibility. Saying, I am a Christian, challenges us to think of our responsibility in living out the Jesus' words and teaching. All these things that make a difference day by day. So don't be shy. Spare no effort to show your brightness and certainness. Let the world see a difference through your brightness and certainness. This is what we are asked of the Lord. The second part of this story is that Jesus stands on the law and the prophets. In general, the Jesus is easily regarded as a rule breaker uh, in the eyes of Jewish religious groups. Yes, he was. He was a crazy the rule breaker at the time. But here is something we should not miss or over oversight. Please look at the verse 17 again. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. The point is this. Although we want to experience the God's grace and mercy, we should know we need to be faithful to live, live a life as Christians. That is to say, a divine imputation and human impartation need to work uh, together. For example, in Wesleyan theology, uh, John Wesley mentioned a prevenient grace. At the same time, he highly encouraged his Methodists to practice a means of grace too. As you know, the means of grace is a kind of a channel uh, to experience God's grace uh, through participating in uh, reading the Bible, uh, joining worship services, prayers, fasting, and reading all religious the books uh, to care for spirituality. But likewise, in the story today, the Jesus highly emphasizes that Christians need to exceed the level of righteousness that Pharisees 
and scribes show. We should be super uh, than uh, those of the people. In a word, that Jesus wanted us uh, to be powerful light and strong cert. So the verse 20 says, For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Let's go back to the story of the Jehovah's Witnesses that mentioned earlier. Regards of a theological and biblical interpretation, the reason why I highly value them is their passion to reveal their identity and to reach out to people whether they are welcomed or not. I believe that this is what Methodists need to learn from them. And don't you think that it is time to say that we are united Methodists? The people expect the us to serve the world as a light and salt, as the people called the Methodists served the 18th century England to spread the scriptural holiness throughout the land. Of course, the all United Methodists have their own ideas, interpretation, and viewpoints on theology and the Bible. But God wants them to serve the world as a light and sword together. The expression, the unity in diversity, has been a trademark to show the characters of churches and Christians. We are all different, but we can glow and keep the world the fresh and safe and tasty throughout, through our prayers and efforts uh, to use our holy identity, light and thought. Just as God created this world uh, to by the saying, let there be light. I believe it is time to see another light and sort to transform the world. You and we are the light and the sort in the world. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. The Holy God, the help us to reveal our holy identity given from you, the light and sort. We also want to pray for uh, the United Methodists and all the churches uh, for their revealing holy identity, the light and salt, and thereby let them serve the world the like the people called the Methodists in 18th century in England. And to Christ we pray. Amen. The time to, to join the Holy Communion. Please you open your hymn book to page number 13. Church, 
delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by word and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Because there is one love, we who are many are one body, for we are part of the one love. The bread which we break now is sharing in the body of Christ. The cup of which we give thanks is sharing in the blood of the cross. Could you come to the coming ashes?
God give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. I pray that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us uh, today. I hope that uh, your February new months uh, will be full of God's grace and blessings. And now, would you please stand up if you are able. Will you join me for the closing hymn, page 634. Now let us from this table rise. words. May God, our guardian, protect you, and may Christ, the healer, restore you, and may the Holy Spirit sustain you this day and forevermore. Now go, as a forgiven and holy people, to do the will of the one who loves us unconditionally. Amen. Amen.